Hello guys, welcome once more to the GCE Math Panel Online. In this particular question, we are looking at ATC Mathematics Paper 3, June 2021, question number 8. We employ an indulgence to please subscribe to our channel to encourage us to make more videos like this for you to prepare in your exams. We equally encourage you to share our videos and to leave your comments. If you have papers you'd like us to answer, please get to us directly through our website or leave your comments on YouTube. You can equally get to the button on our website at www.gcematspanel.com and you send a paper that you would like us to answer. Please watch this video to the end and don't forget to share it. So question eight reads, <clears throat> consider the table of variation of a numerical function f of a real variable x. Copy and complete the variation table b. By using the completed table, so let's start by copying and completing this table. So this is the table. You can see the domain here on the first line. You can see y prime, you can see y. So let us start by looking at the monotonicity of this uh, function. So in this interval, we have negative here is decreasing. You can see it from this curve decreasing from positive infinity to uh, six. So it's decreasing. And here, since this, uh, the value of y prime here is zero, it indicates that this is a turning point. So if this is a turning point, then it should now increase from six to positive infinity. So here it's increasing. And then here we can see from this line that it's increasing. And here it is decreasing. Now with these signs, we already said that this one is increasing at this point. So it seems it's positive, we have increasing. And here it's decreasing. And from here it increases. Since this is a vertical asymptote, it therefore means the limit as x tends to one from above should be negative infinity. So this one should increase from negative infinity to negative two. And here it should decrease from negative two back to negative infinity because this is infinity, right? So this is what we have. So we have copied and completed the table. Now B says that by using the completed table, so we must use by this table that we have completed according to this question, let us one, state the domain of definition in interval form. So the F emphasized interval form. So let's look at this point. We can see the domain of definition on this table here. So the domain of definition is from negative infinity to one from below and one from above to positive infinity. We do not include these turning points. So the domain will be from negative infinity to one from below and we continue with one from above to positive infinity. Now, sub two, state the limit at the bounds. State, there's no say calculate or do anything, just state. So let's look at the limits at the bounds. As x tends to negative infinity, you can say the function tends to positive infinity, right? And as x tends to positive infinity, it tends to negative infinity. The limit as x tends to one from below, this is it, it's positive infinity. And as x tends to one from above, it's negative infinity. So here are the limits. As x tends to negative infinity, we have positive infinity. As x tends to one from below, we have positive infinity. As x tends to one from above, we have uh, negative infinity. And as x tends to, uh, at this point, okay, as x tends to this point, it tends to, <clears throat> to positive infinity, thank you. x tends to positive infinity, we have negative in, infinity. Now three states that we should now find in the set of real numbers a solution set for the following. A solution set for f of x equals zero. f of x equals zero. Now let us start by looking at the values of y. We see that y descends from positive infinity right down to six and goes back to positive infinity. And then on this side it increases from negative infinity up to two and goes back down to negative infinity. From here, it's very clear that the curve does not cross the x-axis. When you are going to sketch it, you will see the curve does not cross the x-axis. And since the curve does not cross the x-axis, means that there is no solution for the function f of x equals zero. There is no solution. A lot of students had problems with this particular question. So here, there is no solution because 
you can say f of x is actually greater than six. So y is actually greater than six and y is less than negative two. So y never crosses the x-axis. Therefore, there's no solution. And then secondly, f of x less than zero. For f of x less than zero, we just have to look for the y values which are less than zero key. You can see here, right? So if you look at this other side of the curve here, that's that all the y values are negative. And where does this occur? This occurs for x greater than one to infinity. So x one from above to positive infinity. Okay, this is it. Then f of x greater than zero. Where y is greater than zero, you can start here in this interval, y is greater than zero, right? And this occurs for x belonging to the interval from negative infinity to one from below. Okay, so for x greater than zero, we have from negative infinity to one from below. Then d, f prime of x equals zero. <clears throat> so now we need the gradient function and the function y itself. So we can see y prime is equal to zero here, right? So when y prime is equal to zero, what's the value of x? x is negative one. And here, when y prime is equal to zero, what is x again? x is three. So these are the two values. So for f prime of x equals zero, we have either x equals negative one or x equals three. In fact, these are the x values at the turning point. Then f prime of x greater than zero. So we look at this our gradient function in green. Here is positive, and here is also positive. So for f prime of x greater than zero, we have a uh, negative one from above to one from below, and one from above to three from below. So that's what we have from negative one to one, and from one to three. The last one is f prime of x less than zero. X prime of and you just mean you are just looking for f prime of x, which is negative, right? So this one is also about monotonicity. Here it's negative. You can see from negative infinity to one, and from three from above to positive infinity. Okay, so this is what we have. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we have a lot in stock for you. The more subscribers we make, we get, the more videos we make. And the more comments you leave, the more videos we make to satisfy you. Technical students, are not, we are not having many of them coming in and we are encouraging you who is watching this video to share this video with your friends and different WhatsApp groups. And why not on Facebook? So that the more we have more audience, we'll be motivated to make more videos to help your brothers and sisters who are coming behind and those who are actually suffering because they have one issue or another and do not have time maybe to concentrate or are struggling with school and their life at the same time. So we are counting on you. Now, the C part of this question states, given that f of x has the form ax plus b plus 4 over 1 minus x, is them the values of a and b? If you need a copy of this paper, just click on the link on the description below, and you can download the question paper directly. It's the June 2021, paper 1, uh, paper 3, question 8. So here, to find the values of a and b what we are going to use are or what's going to help us at the turning points or maybe you can differentiate and work it out but this is the easiest method i recommend for you because now when x is negative one y is six and when x is three y is minus two so let's use this and form two equations with two unknowns a and b and solve directly let's see that in the next step <clears throat> So we have ax plus b is equal to that. And we know that f of minus one is six, f of three is two. When we substitute this in, the, in, the, in this equation above and simplify, this is what we come out with. And we end up with minus a plus b equals four, equation a, and three a plus b equals zero, equation b. So if we now say equation b minus equation a, we are going to have four a's to be equal to minus one, and a is equal to minus for a to be equal to minus four and a equals minus one. We now substitute in the equation, we have b to be equal to three. This is as easy as this one is. If you use other methods, you end up stressing yourself so much. Now the d part of the question says you should state the asymptotes and distinguish their nature. So from the domain of definition, we know that the line x equals one is the equation of the horizontal asymptote and the oblique asymptote, you can see it here, right? Is ax plus b because the limit of 4 over 1 minus x as x tends to infinity is equal to 0. So we are left just with ax plus b. So at this point, y is equal to minus x plus 3. So these are the two asymptotes. 
Now the thing there, he says I should prove that <clears throat> the point one two is the symmetry. Now the center one two is center of symmetry if the x value there is one. So f of one plus h, h is any constant. f of one plus h plus f of one minus h divided by two should be equal to the y value. So f of the x value plus a or any other number you want, the constant you like to use, some people use k. So f of one plus k plus f of one minus k on two should be equal to the y value, which is two, okay? If this one here was three, then we should replace one here by three. So when we simplify this, we end up having, and working with the left-hand side, you have a two minus h minus four on h plus two plus h plus four on h, all that on two, and all of that will give us two. The left-hand side is equal to two, which is equal to this right-hand side. Therefore, the point I, what would coordinate one and two, is the center of symmetry. Now, they say we should find the integral from negative three to zero of fx minus y dx. Integral from zero, minus three to zero of f of y, f of x minus y dx. So when we say f of x minus y, you know that our y here, which is the oblique asymptote, right? So just take away this oblique asymptote, we left with just four over one minus x. So if you differentiate this denominator, you are going to have negative one, which is not called the numerator, right? So we first of all factor out the four. When you differentiate, you now have negative one, so to balance it, we multiply outside the integral sign by negative and inside by negative so that we uh, we have not changed anything because negative and negative is positive and the numbers remain the same. I know that since four is a constant, we can take it out of the integral sign. So when we now differentiate the denominator, we'll have negative one, which is the numerator, and this will give us minus four lean one minus x, absolute value from minus three to zero. When you take those limits, you have four lean four or in 256. The last part is just to sketch this curve. You already have everything, right? The, um, so the oblique asymptote is the line y is equal to minus x plus three. So it can be, you can make a, a table of values for y plus x minus three, or one uh, minus x plus three. And this is the oblique asymptote. The vertical asymptote is like x equals uh, one. So this is it here. You can see these are the turning points. These turning points, which are called at, uh, we saw from the table, right? At uh, three minus two and at minus one, six. So well, that, this is what we use here, f of minus one, six. And we saw that f of three was two, minus two, this is here. So this is it. So we thank you guys so much and we pray, we plead on you, please, 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 subscribe to this channel because there is a lot for you the more subscribers we get the more shares and comments we get the more videos we will make and we can make these videos as fast as possible depending on what you want if you have papers to send to us please send to us directly visit us on www.jcmathspan.blogspot.com that is where we have most of our videos we don't put most of our videos online so we just get to this blog and you will get to a lot of our videos you can search whatever you want to search there notes and many other things click on the link below and you will have the remaining questions from question one to nine and you equally have the paper thank you so much stay tuned and god bless you in your studies bye bye